everyone, this is Adam Samir, ESM Today. We are now having our first episode of the ESM Talk Show. And what a better guest to start with than our Egyptian international rider, Dr. Sam Haddahan, who has been competing in the World Cup Finals a couple of days ago. His fellow mate, Joanne Sloan Allen, the manager of Team WKD. Welcome, Samah. Welcome, Joanne. Hi, Adam. Hi. Uh, Samah, at the beginning, everybody is so excited and uh, to know uh, to get to know about your experience in the World Cup Finals. So we'd like you to share with us this experience, especially that it was your first time to be there, and uh, we'd like you to share this experience with us. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much, ESM, for having me, for having us here, the, the Team WKD. Uh, I got a lot of support from this website, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, okay, my uh, experience in the World Cup Finals, it's uh, for me, it's undescribable. It just happened, and uh, we heard in mid-January that I was qualified to the World Cup Finals, and we couldn't be more excited. We started, uh, me and Joanne, working as a team to uh, prepare our mayor, w, um, WKD Pepper Pot. And uh, she, we, we, we have a couple of classes just to prepare her for the show and get her as fit and, uh, and as strong as we can. And then it all started in Sertogenbosch, where we uh, started the first day, the training round. And we had also our team trainer, uh, John Leddingham. Um, okay, the, the atmosphere was uh, crazy tense. And uh, even you can see the horses were so tense and so excited as well. Pepper Pot went every day in the training ring, so happy and enthusiastic, watching all the big, uh, big horses with the big names, such as you all know them, Ludger Bierbaum, Marco Kutscher, the big German guns, and uh, Edwin Alexander, and all the big, big names, Peter Schwitzer from Switzerland. And for me, it was also very exciting to see all these riders because I haven't been in such um, a top sport game. So uh, for me, it was a really, really good experience. And uh, thank God I got a couple of good results for me as, a, as, a, as the first time to be qualified for that show. And uh, I went to the final round, which wasn't in uh, our uh, plan. We were just going there for the experience. And like we talked about it as a team with Joanne and with John, we went there with the right attitude. Whatever result we get is good enough to be in such a, in such a show. And uh, at the end, it worked really well in our favor. And I was qualified to the last round. And the mare was jumping fantastic. So for me, it was a super, super experience. And I definitely want to repeat it again. Joanne, I think this was also your first experience uh, to have uh, to be owner of a horse in the World Cup Finals. So we'd like to hear uh, how it felt. For sure, you've been there to watch a couple of times before, but to be an owner uh, and uh, manager of the team and to have a horse competing over there, for sure, it's a different experience. You would like to share it uh, with us? Oh, it was a fantastic experience. I mean, at the end of the day, for an Irish owner to have a horse in the World Cup with an Egyptian rider was, for me, the perfect combination. Um, to go there and okay I believe always in my horse I believe always in my rider but it's the World Cup final you know nobody can say nobody can be arrogant to say yes we're going there to win we were going there for experience we were delighted to have the opportunity to get there and um, the way things worked out it was crazy but once we knew we were going then it was all about getting there the best chance that we could so the preparation beforehand was intense and Sam worked hard the mayor everything was to get everything right on the day and we were lucky everything came right on the day to the best that we could um, I was so proud to be there the atmosphere is so intense when you as soon as you arrive it's different from any other mm -hmm. show everybody's on edge everybody's tense the grooms the horses it's such a different atmosphere from any other show even the five-star shows that we've been at you straight away knew this was special and um, to be a part of it was amazing. So uh, for me, it was a brilliant experience and I'm very proud of Sam and I'm very proud of our horses um, to do this. We are all proud of you as well. So Samah, for most of the Egyptians here, for sure everybody was happy for your results and everything. But most of the people here, they don't know how much this will affect you in the future. Will it help you more to get uh, invitations for bigger shows? Will it uh, improve your ranking? Uh, yani, besides the great performance that you had over there, we want you to tell us how will this help you a little bit in your uh, career uh, that you're having outside. Okay. Um, first of all, I'd like to also take this opportunity to thank each and every person in Egypt. 
they were very very supportive the amount of support and the amount of uh, motivation I got from the whole of the Egyptian equestrian community was unbelievable uh, my family was over there Joanne's family was over were over there as well and a lot of friends were there to just to support me as the first Egyptian to be there so I couldn't be more pleased I couldn't be more delighted to get all this motivations and support from my fellow Egyptians. Also, uh, Joanne's family, uh, who are actually our sponsors, Mr. Joe Sloan and Mrs. Pat Sloan, were there and I couldn't have better sponsors over there. They were really supportive. They were there for every move and I'd re I really appreciated that. I, I count them like my second family, so I was really with a lot of support over there. To answer your question, Adam, um, I think it will definitely affect my future career as a show jumper, will affect our whole uh, team, team uh, like the WKD, WKD team will definitely be on a better scale in the future shows. I, got a couple, I think I got a couple of ranking points uh, on my second day in the World Cup Finals because I had only one down and uh, I was 12th on the, on, the, on the ranking so I for sure get ranking points for that which, which will push me a bit up on the Rolex ranking points. Uh, and definitely with our performance and the way the mayor jumped over there I think we'll, uh, we'll get into bigger shows a lot easier like if we just sent an, uh, an entries and stuff like that we'll, we'll get in a lot easier which will actually work well with our campaign to jump bigger shows and, and more competitive shows uh, I'm really looking forward for after that we're on a break for a moment and then we'll start on uh, in Portugal on a four star show and we'll see what happens will happen next Joan, as the manager of the team, we would like to hear your plans for this summer or for the next couple of months. What did you plan for the team and for Samah to be doing uh, for shows or getting ready for uh, something big? We would like to hear this from the team manager. <laughs> okay, um, we have been building the team now for the last year and a half, Sam and I, and I've always aimed very high. This has been always the aim that I have a goal in mind that we both work towards and then I push Sam. So um, at the minute, there are several paths. Um, as you know, the Olympic qualifier this year in Qatar, Sam was very unlucky um, and didn't get through to win another place for Egypt. Um, at the minute, uh, we all know Egypt has one place and you have fantastic riders at the minute. It's super, it's in everybody's dream. So it's always in the back of everybody's mind. Um, our preparation as a team now is We've been to the World Cup Finals now, so now our real aim at the minute is to get Sam up the rankings um, because this is very important in the world stage. He's now been to Europe and he's competed against the best in the world. A lot of the riders now, when they've seen him and met him, they're very excited about this young talent that's coming up. And especially in the Arab world at the minute, it's very exciting. You have a lot of very good riders that are coming up. They're very sympathetic. Um, Sam especially shows a lot of sympathy and empathy with his horses and for Irish horses especially this is really important. Um, Irish horses are very different from any other horse. You can see with Flexible winning the World Cup final, they give their all but it's a two-way thing, it's a partnership. They believe in you and they'll try for you and fight for you. So now obviously we have to be careful, we don't want to abuse that because Pepper Pot is a really genuine mare and she's, a, I believe, a championship horse. She always gets better as the courses get bigger. She tries harder and harder as it is. So we have to be careful. We're gonna give her a break now. And then in June, we start um, in Lisbon. We would love it, it's a Nations Cup show. Um, I know Sam is very excited and some of the other riders have been very supportive, Abdel, uh, Saeed, and a few other of the riders to get together and try maybe to have a Nations Cup team. Um, that would be lovely if we could do that and WKD will definitely be supporting that 100% but obviously the riders need the backing from um, the Federation and to get together and do this so we're going to try and do this in June um, then we're going to aim for Vimero which is a three-star show in Portugal uh, then we had to Cannes, which is five star, which I'll jump in, and hopefully Sam, if we can get the opportunity for him to jump there. Um, San Remo after this, and then we head to Vimeiro again and La Coronha, which are all high star shows, 
which gives Sam the opportunity for ranking points. Um, we have a nice strong team of horses now. Sam has also got um, a nine-year-old mare, Championi, which I jumped last year. Uh, he will now take her up to the bigger classes and Suma Zorro, our eight-year-old mare, who's a fantastic mare, she'll have a little break now, I'll jump her, smaller classes, um, to give Sam the best opportunity that he has to get ranking points. So as team manager, this is we have to be careful with the horses that we have, but we think we've got a nice mix of horses and we'll be aiming for the bigger shows. Sam, going back to the Nations Cup, it was always a dream for all the Egyptians to have a team uh, of Egyptians competing uh, in Europe, especially now that we have three riders based in Europe. We have Karim Azobi, our uh, international rider, and we have Abdel Said, and now with your great performance and your support from uh, Joanne. So did you plan anything with the rest of the team, especially that I know that Karim uh, Zorbi, he talked with us before about this, that he's going to try to put the team together to be competing in some of the Nations Cup and did you plan anything together as a team over there? Or? Um, well, we talked about this wherever we were in uh, Qatar for the Olympic qualifier because we actually got very good results. Like we were uh, third in the, in the Pan Arab Games, we got uh, the bronze medal and then in the Olympic qualifier we also were second just after the Saudis. We were a bit unlucky in the second round, we would have won it. But we were actually talking uh, about putting up a team for a Nations Cup in Europe later on in the year. And we were all very excited and then I uh, put Joanne w with us in the conversation as she also very, very excited to support the whole idea of having an Egyptian team for once to compete on the highest scale of Nations Cup in Europe. And um, now, as you say, we have <coughs> the riders and we have the horses. We have Karim Zobi, who has a good string of horses and he's been in Europe and he's a fabulous rider. Abdel Said has also been in Europe for so long and he's just so talented and he's got good horses. And now with my mare, I think we can put up a good team. And <coughs> we have other riders that come and go to Europe that will also give us the fourth rider that will all be happy to, be, to go to a Nations Cup with four riders with the full, full string. Uh, we were talking about doing the First Nations Cup in Lumen, uh, which is, which just, I think it's on this weekend or something. But the thing is, because it's very busy, I was busy with the World Cup, Karim is busy, busy with, uh, to qualify his horses, one of his horses to go to the Olympic Games, and uh, Abdel is jumping a couple of five stars as well, so it's a bit busy. But just before, uh, after the World Cup, Abdel was there and I talked with him and uh, we hopefully put the team together and we do our First Nations Cup in Lisbon. It's a four-star show. It's the, um, the, the second league after the top sport, the second league, which is actually very big if you competed on this level. Uh, I'm going to give him a call as soon as I go back to Europe and uh, make the whole uh, setting to go there because he has another Egyptian rider that he might um, uh, produce to put him in such a class, Mohammed Mansour. So we'd be really glad to, to start that and then hopefully we go to more Nations Cup and if we got good results then we're sorted for hopefully to qualify for the uh, 2014 uh, World Equestrian Games in Normand, Norman Defence. Now, Joanne, you've been to Egypt for a couple of times now. You've been competing in the ESM shows, and we want to hear your opinion. You know about uh, how do you see the sport in Egypt? How you think it's getting better or uh, just staying on the same level? How do you see the shows and the level of the riders in Egypt and the, any in the sport in general? Okay, I come from uh, a background in Ireland where we're very complacent about our sport. It's we grew up there. The Everything is in place, um, so we're very spoilt. Um, I jump a lot in Europe, always have done. So for me, uh, our shows are in place and we take it for granted. We don't appreciate that other countries the sport is still growing. So we're very privileged and very lucky to have this in place. Um, my experience before I met Sam was like everybody. I didn't realize the sport was so strong in the Arab com countries. Obviously, I've seen the results in the World Equestrian Games with the Saudi teams. And everybody then started to sit back and look at these other countries that were emerging. Um, we're quite arrogant in Ireland and in, uh, I think, the UK and in Europe because we believe this is our sport and it's an arrogance. And all of a sudden now, these other countries are coming up, like your countries are coming up, and you have really good riders. 
Um, they're now getting the people who are putting money into the sport, so they've got good horses. And now you need to, your infrastructure is the shows. So I was very surprised when I first came to the ESM show, and um, I was delighted to see how well organized the show was. Um, the people are so enthusiastic. Every rider was so supportive of the sport. Everybody wants to get in there and jump. And it's an enthusiasm that actually we don't see in Europe now. Uh, riders, we take it for granted. Um, so to see the support that your show got and how everybody wanted it to work and the, uh, the organization of the shows was, I thought, fantastic. So for me, okay, I haven't been to an, an ordinary show, but the one show that I went to um, at the beginning was a brilliant introduction to the sport in Egypt. Um, it was fantastically run, as I say, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and it made me realize that you have so much talent coming up. If you can grow your sport at home to produce your riders, then I think they can be anything and, you know, look out Europe because the Arab riders are on their way mm -hmm. and you're definitely, definitely going to improve the sport with what you're doing here. As we all know that uh, before you move to Europe, uh, you're a superstar here in Egypt, you've been the national champion a couple of times, you've been winning an inter some international classes, Grand Prix. But now since you've been in Europe for nine months now, I think, yeah. I just want to know, and with all the attraction that you've been getting, not just because of the World Cup Finals, but even before with the, your fantastic results and all this, what, how does this make you feel, you know, with all this in, I don't want to give you uh, an evil eye or something, but any, in this short period, in nine months, achieving, I believe this is uh, too much to achieve in like nine months or something, uh, being to the World Cup Finals, uh, reaching the final round, all this, how does this make you feel? Okay, I must start by saying I couldn't be luckier to go to Europe and get all this kind of support. Normally, if you go from a country like Egypt to Europe, you start very small and you try to build yourself. For me, it was really hard because, like you said, I was really, I got a lot of good results over here. So it's really hard to go over there and start from, the, from, from scratch. So I was really lucky to go and meet Joanne Sloan Allen, which was, I went there and I started to jump big classes straight away, which was really, really good for me. And I, I, that's what I always wanted to do. Since I went there, I got a lot of support from our sponsors, Beverage, Beverage Brands, who is the parent company of WKD, who is actually supporting the WKD team. And uh, that's why, with all the support and everybody's behind me, you know, when you get some people pushing you, you, you push yourself even more. And that's why in nine months, I'm not going to say I, I won a lot of classes or this, but everything we aimed for till now, we went to, we achieved. Like I, we, we, the first, the first aim was to go to the Olympic qualifier and, or first to qualify the mayor. So we went to a show in Arezzo, we a four-star show, and then I qualified the mayor. And then we said, okay, now we need to qualify you as an individual to get another place to the Olympic Games. I was there. I was really close. Me and Abdel were really close to get to, to get a second place in Egypt. Just one time fault took me out of it. But we were really close, so for me, for me as a person, it, it was an achievement. And then we, we said, okay, we need to qualify to the World Cup Finals. So we started in Morocco, three, three shows there, and it was really hectic to go over there. But my team manager, John, was really resilient to go over there. And I told her, if it's so hard, we don't need to go. She said, no, we'll go. It's the World Cup Final qualif uh, qualifications, and you need to start there. So I started in Morocco, got a couple of good results, and it put me on the top of the league till the end of the year, till December. So, and then we qualified to the World Cup Finals. So everything till now, thank God, is working our way. And then we qualified to the World Cup Finals. We said we'll go there, whatever result we get, we're going there with the right attitude. And then I was qualified to the last round. So for me, it's a super achievement as a person because in nine months, like you say, with a lot of support from everybody around me, I achieved a lot of things that I was dreaming of since I was five. And hopefully my next dream comes comes close as well so uh, I, I, I'll say again I couldn't be luckier and uh, I really appreciate everybody that's been behind me and I really appreciate the support of the Egyptian equestrian community ESM today and my fellow team Joanne and her family and my family everybody I, I couldn't be luckier. Okay Joanne as we know as that the, the team is based in Ireland so it's not really in Central Europe 
So does this logistics affect you in any way moving with the team to other countries and does it affect in any way or is it normal for you? We would like to hear this from you. Okay. Always as an Irish rider we have this big problem. There's two pieces of water before we can get to Europe. So we have a lot of air miles. Yeah. Sam and I spend an <laughs> awful true. lot of time on airplanes and airports and boats. Yeah. But this is, if you want to be the best in your sport and you want your horses to be in the best place, you've got to go there. They're not going to come to us, we have to go to them. But we've been building and building our stable. And actually also now, the Irish horse has had a bit of a lull for a while. Um, the Irish producers were greedy and we lost a lot of, com uh, people used to come to Ireland to buy the Irish horse. We got greedy, people left and they went to Europe, Holland and Belgium. But now I think they're finding the same situation there in Holland and Belgium. And people now are starting to see the Irish horses now that the breeders and producers, because they couldn't sell their horses, they concentrated on improving the breed. And this is at Sycamore Stables what my basic concept was. I took the best Irish mares that we had, I brought in the foreign stallions to try and improve the breeding. And now we have a fantastic five-year-old mare that yeah. Sam has competed this year at Hullabaloo. She's a homebred um, and she's actually from a foreign mare, but she's born in Ireland and the production has been the Irish way. Very slow, steady. We haven't done her European way where she's been at every show. And we have some very exciting young stock as well that again, the same thing from very good Irish mares. Pepper Pot is from an Irish mare, but she's a foreign father. Uh, Suma Zorro is exactly the same. And we're hoping now that eventually that our horses will be able to stand up for themselves. Our yard, we've been putting a lot of work in the yard at home. We have a beautiful yard, we have lovely menages, we have a gallop, we have stables. So we're hoping what Sam and I would like to do is, Sam has a lot of friends that come, we'd love them to come and visit us. And we have the facility there that riders can come, stay with us for as long as they want, train, come to some of the shows in Ireland and enjoy it. Um, this is what we're about. We want, we're aiming for quality. We want people to enjoy the sport. It's uh, for us more important that we, we have a horse and a rider together that are happy than to, to sell somebody a horse. That's not what we're about. We're not really dealers, but we have a lot of nice horses and we'd love people the opportunity to come and see them. Um, so yes, Ireland is a bit of a handicap where we are, but with our ports now and our travel, it's not that hard to get there. And what we do is we take the horses to the big shows in Europe to get them the experience, to get all this, and then we take them home to Ireland for the rest. So um, I think we're in the perfect situation, but you have to be prepared to travel. Um, and that's the main thing about it. It's the same as you being in Egypt. If you want to go to the good shows, you have to travel. Um, and that's our sport. Samah, for sure, you know that now you are a superhero for most of the Egyptian riders here for what you've reached so far in the sport. So how do you see yourself with the, your position now in Europe? Uh, how would this be uh, beneficial for the riders here in Egypt? Okay, um, I was raised in Egypt. I spent most of my life show jumping in Egypt. Okay, I was lucky when I was a kid. I went abroad for the summertime and jumped over there. So uh, this is what I would like to do. And this is how I'm going to help or I will, I'm willing to help my, the Egyptian riders in Egypt. I'd like people to come over to our yard and spend a bit of time with us and, and train with us and train with our trainer as well because we have a trainer, like I told you before, John Leddingham, which for me is a super fantastic trainer. He's very focused and very straightforward, straight to the point, and uh, he's for sure a lot of help to our team. So, um, okay, I. Everybody, oh, every Egyptian is more than welcome to come in our yard and be a part of it. And uh, I'm not saying that, but we did, uh, we did this already as a team. We got an Egyptian good friend of mine, Ala Maisara, to come and help me in, 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 uh, in Valencia because I had a lot of horses over there. And he had a fantastic time. I also had a good company because Joanne was away uh, skiing for a holiday. <laughs> so I, I got Ala and he came and he was a lot of help. and. He rode the horses and he competed and he had a good time. So uh, I know the sport is rising in Egypt, but it's hard because we don't have a lot of international shows. So what I can do is, what I can offer is, if somebody wants to come over, we can find them a horse from the yard and he can just compete with it and have a bit of fun, experience and everything. And that's what I'm trying to put together with Joanne 
in the summertime if you can get a couple of kids or big riders to come over and ride ride the horses that we have in the stables because normally most of the horses we have are good horses so they'll have a good time and also they get the experience and I think this is a start to get more riders interested in the sport and then we'll have instead of having one team we'll have two teams and we'll have a junior team and we'll have a, a senior and a, a senior team and another reserve team so that's what we need because Europe you'll find that the Dutch people or the German people instead of having one or two or three teams they have five teams we only have three riders now but hopefully in one or two years time with the help of Karim and Abdel and me and everybody put in together some effort and then the whole Egyptian community will be on a bigger scale in Europe and hopefully compete on the top sport. In Dan, Joanne, we want to thank you so much on behalf of ESM today and the equestrian community in Egypt for all the support you've been given to Samah so far and we want to wish you the best of luck for the WK team and thank you so much again. And I would like to actually add my own thanks to ESM, to everybody in the equestrian community. I have met so many friends. I, I feel like I'm now part Egyptian. I'm so proud to be I'm so proud to be part of all this. I mean this is a roller coaster that we've been on for the last year and a half. Sure. And it's it's crazy and who knows where we're gonna end up, but for sure Sam and I are gonna be pushing and we're gonna try and do the best that we can do and anything that we can give back we're gonna do. And for Sama, there are no words to express how we are all proud of you for what you've reached so far in the sport. We want to thank you so much for dedicating all your time as a doctor for this sport. And we wish you the best of luck in the future and to be with us soon again in the ESN talk show. Uh, inshallah, for sure. Uh, I want to thank each and everybody in ESM. Uh, you've been putting a lot of effort in the sport and uh, the, am the amount of success you're getting at the moment with the shows and uh, the website and everything is, I think, is really admirable. Um, the support I get in person was unbelievable. I got a lot of uh, attention on this website, which I definitely appreciate. The whole team appreciate that. And uh, again, I really want to thank each and every Egyptian because at the World Cup Finals, I, would, I wouldn't have done it except with people really supporting and pushing me. And the amount of phone calls and messages, I, I got my phone taken off me because I got a lot of messages in the World Cup Finals just you know, to wish me good luck and we're all proud of you and all this. This really meant a lot to me. I felt like, um, I, f I felt so, so good and I felt so positive and I really wanted to do my best in the show. Uh, it worked out well. Hopefully next year, if I'm qualified, I get a better result. And um, again, thank you very much for everybody and wish me luck and hopefully next year will be a better result. Thank you very much. Joanne, Sema, we want to thank you so much for your time. Wishing you the best of luck in the future. Thank you very much for having us here. Yeah, thanks for inviting us. It was our pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone. We hope you enjoyed our first episode of the ESM Talk Show and see you soon in our second episode. Thank you, ESM.